Hey guys, Martin here. Uh, we're still here. You know what? I'm not even going to try and guess what number we're on. I know we're on a high number, and that's the important thing. Um, the other important thing to note right now is that it's a different location, in a different place. I mean, a completely different place in many different ways, but <laughs> mainly physically, uh, because I we moved house. We moved to a completely different location. It's quite a ways, well, I say quite a ways out, from a guy who once moved across the ocean to live on the west coast of America. I guess it's not that big a jump, but it's a significant jump because this is, uh, we're now living in a, a condo slash house. The place we're living in is actually bigger than my family home back in England, and uh, not by a lot, but by enough that it's uh, it definitely feels a lot roomier than uh, than what we had before. We, what we had before was a three room apartment. Not that there's anything to turn your nose up at. It was a perfectly nice place to live, but we outgrew it a little bit. Um, three people living in three rooms is you know it, it can be you know a bit close for comfort at times. But uh, this place is uh, much it's much more reasonable. It's a really nice community, and um, we get to hang all our awesome artwork up on the walls, and, uh, you know, it's, we're homeowners now, and it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of scary, and also great, but still really scary. Uh, we, we had a lot of hiccups going into this uh, move, unfortunately. Going into it and coming out of it, we're still dealing with some hiccups. We have to drink a glass of water backwards, or whatever it is, you know, somebody has to jump out of a closet and go boo so that we lose these hiccups. But the the one we were just dealing with uh, the other day was that we we had gone through all these hoops to get a working washer dryer. And uh, we ended up buying new ones because the hookups for the ones we had before didn't work here. And it was a whole rigmarole. But the, then we bought these new ones and they got recalled literally two days ago, right after we'd finished installing them and had plumbing work done and everything. It's been a hassle. <laughs> I won't lie, it's been a big hassle, but that's moving. That's life. It's hassle. But I just wanted, first of all, to tell you what's happening, why I haven't been posting We're Still Here's for what must be at least four weeks now, and that's a huge oversight by me. That's not only an oversight, but it's a, a problem for me, because first of all, well, I've been focusing a lot of my energy, both negative and positive, on just moving into this place. And obviously, that's only so effective. It's only There's only so much you can use that for. But that's been how I've been coping with it in the meantime. Obviously, you guys had no way of knowing that, and I had no way of really documenting it. I didn't have the time or, I hate to say it, the inclination to sit down at any point and take half an hour to an hour just to talk things out to myself, to get these feelings out and these these um, these thoughts and just these notes about where I'm at in life and in this, you know, journey that I'm on in, you know, as far as depression goes. I just didn't take the time. I, I'm not even going to say that I didn't have the time. I didn't take the time. And um, while I didn't really, you know, fall down or, you know, return to a lot of you know, the really negative stuff that I've been going through uh, in the last, you know, six to 12 months. But, you know, I struggled a little bit. I, I definitely stumbled every so often. Uh, I had one day where I just felt miserable all day, but I had to keep working through it. I had to keep going because if I stopped, I knew it would overtake me. And, you know, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. I was lucky enough that it worked this time. A lot of the time it doesn't. Um, and, and even if it did work, it was, should have been something that I talked about. It should have been something that I acknowledged. It should have been something that, you know, I put on video. And so there was a way for you and me to, to share in that, but I didn't. So that's on me. I feel really bad about that. Um, I'm not going to beat myself up over it because at the end of the day, I, I am still here regardless. Hey, that's the title, kind of. <laughs> I I'm still here. And I'm, I'm back to this now. I'm back to talking to you guys and just having this video diary uh, to show what's going on. And what's going on right now, and this is my segue into what the subject of this one is about, is that I stopped going to therapy 
not because I'm done with therapy. I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to be done with therapy, period. Um, but I stopped my current therapist. I, I don't know if the right word is cancelled. I, I'm no longer seeing my therapist from before because of the move, not because I chose not to have therapy, but because of the move, it was just impossible to justify what was turning into an hour to two hours of driving just to get to my therapist uh, from where we currently are. Not that therapy isn't worth, you know, the time and the effort it might take, but I couldn't justify losing the amount of work that I was losing. I was already, you know, trying to work around moving in and getting everything situated, but to, to also work around a trip through 90 minutes or so of LA traffic just to go talk about, you know, I, I needed therapy just to get past the traffic situation, <laughs> you know, and, and that all, that just became a huge problem. So I just ended up cancelling therapy there. Fortunately, and I say this before I've even really booked anything, fortunately, the Kaiser Permanente um, Mental Health Facility, where I used to go to get group therapy, is like really close. It's it's surprisingly close. So if I ever wanted to do that again, and that was the first really positive experience with therapy I'd really had, I could I have that option. I have the option. It's right there. And uh, I'm sure in the coming weeks I will you know, schedule at least something, you know, I'll probably schedule a few solo therapy sessions and see how that goes with the guys that they have. Um, and I'll keep you updated on that. You know, I'll talk about that more in, in the weeks to come. It is a big deal that I'm, I'm currently not seeing a therapist. It's a big deal that I'm currently without a therapist to me because it's almost like that feeling of when, you know, you're, you're riding a bicycle, like you're practicing riding a bicycle and this whole time, it's not, I wouldn't say I have like safety wheels on, I'm not riding a tricycle or anything, but I feel like somebody else is guiding the bike behind me, you know, if that makes sense, like, you know, a parent would sort of hold it in place and then without telling you, they let go and then you realize, oh, I've been doing this on my own for a while. That's kind of how it feels right now for me because I'm like, I would gained a lot of skills, social and mental skills to deal with my depression and my anxiety. And as a result of them giving me that and me choosing, you know, not, not because I don't feel like I need it, but still choosing to not see a therapist at the moment, I feel, I feel a very big burst of, of not just strength, but, you know, um, control. I feel this huge amount of control within me. And that's something I've been lacking for a long time. And I'm not saying that you know, something that you should do is cancel therapy just so you can feel that. But if and when you do end up stopping therapy and you feel like you're in the right place or, or that, you know, if you feel either better or you feel like, you know, you need to make a transition and you're in a good enough place that it doesn't feel like you're being, it's being forced upon you or that you you have to do this despite the fact that you still need it. And that must be an awful situation to be in. But if you're in a good place and you feel like you've gotten something out of it and you make the choice yourself, speaking from where I'm at right now, that's incredible. That's incredibly, it's a gift. It, it feels like I, everything about me is reinforced as a human being. You know, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like I'm wearing, like, I've gone through training and I'm finally ready to go out into the battlefield and I'm not, like, terrified of everything possibly being a mine, you know, hiding underground. I'm actually, I feel very confident just striding across the battlefield and being like, yeah, I've got this. There isn't even really a fight going on here. It's me, you know. I, I just have to fight for myself rather than against anything. But yeah, uh, that's where I'm at right now as far as therapy goes. But it reminded me of the decision to go to therapy it reminded me of this situation that I was in when I realized that I had no other choice or rather than if I didn't make the choice, then I would have no other choice, you know? And I'm sure I've talked about this before in We're Still Here, but it wasn't an easy thing to do. And the reason it wasn't easy for me is because it wasn't something I wanted to acknowledge. It wasn't something that I wanted to need. It was something that I thought you needed if you were broken or if you were, you know, helpless and without, you know, 
If you're a lost cause, mozzarella. She's just climbed the furniture like crazy today, I don't know why. It's probably just because I'm down here talking to you guys. But I remember how difficult that decision was, and I'm sure a lot of you have gone through this as well. It's an incredibly difficult decision just because it's you reaching out for a life raft in an ocean where you're convinced that you should be able to swim to the, you know, the, the land, you know, to dry land, and, the, you know, it's completely within your capability, and if you don't do that, then you're weaker than everybody else, and there's something wrong with you, and you're admitting that you, as a person, are not even completely a person anymore, and you need somebody else to teach you again how to be a person. It's like going back to being a baby in a cot, wearing a diaper, or a nappy if you're from England, like me, it's like doing that and being like, yeah, I need to go back to that part of my life and, and figure everything out all over again from scratch. At least that's how it felt to me. You know, I felt like, well, this basically means I'm an infant and I didn't learn everything I needed to to be a functioning adult. And what does that say about me? Um, but it was really difficult to make that decision. Fortunately for me, and I obviously this doesn't apply to everybody, I didn't have to make it completely on my own. I had Mariana helping me do that, but at the same time, my resistance to it really put an emotional toll on the relationship, and I, I mean, I wouldn't say that it damaged our feelings for each other at all, but it made her very distressed that I wouldn't get help, and it made me very distressed that she thought that I needed help. And it wasn't until I realized that part of me was damaged and needed fixing that I could take the time to realize that it was something I needed and it was something that needed to happen. And it wasn't a case of me being able to ignore it or rejecting it and just soldiering on and forcing myself to pretend that everything was okay. It was a case of if I tried to pretend I was okay, it would make things worse. I, and I, I could only face up to it, I could only face it head on with the help of someone else, my therapist, ultimately. And it was really tough. It was really difficult for me to make that decision. And there are still days where I look back on it and I say that was one of the hardest days of my life. And even though it was just making a phone call, it was just making a phone call to somebody else. But it wasn't just that. It wasn't just calling somebody and making an appointment to talk to a person. It was me admitting that there was something terribly wrong with me and that inaction was not an option. It was me allowing myself to accept the fact that this wasn't going to just heal on its own. It was, it was me look, it was me choosing not to ignore the wounds that I had inflicted on myself, not literally. It was me choosing not to ignore the wounds that the longer world around me had inflicted on me that I was just choosing to ignore. And that's a difficult thing to do. And if you've ever been able to do that, then I respect you a great deal. And if you're not able to do it, I still respect you because I understand how hard that is to accept and acknowledge and admit. And you're not a worse person or a lesser person or a weaker person for not being able to do it. You're just going through something really effing awful. But there's always that option. Know that. There is always that option. Even though I've taken the time to choose not to see a therapist temporarily, I still am aware of the fact that having one, you know, when I needed it, saved me. And having and not having one, but knowing I still need to talk to them, and knowing that I still have that option, and it's a good thing, that keeps me comfortable and stable. But having nothing, being lost out in the ocean, in the waves, in the rough of the tide, the dark tide, that, you know, sometimes it's hard to, you know, see it for the, for the sky, you know? It's so dark out. And the ocean and the sky meet and there's no difference. That's what depression feels like to me. 
being lost out in that alone that's really difficult as well so ultimately what I'm saying is therapy helps and there's a dog coming down to see me she probably wants some therapy by being taken out for a walk this morning I guess ultimately this is this entry in particular is just me saying here's where I'm at my life is significantly better I don't know if I could have done it without therapy and I'm not saying that nobody can do it without therapy but I'm saying that nobody should nobody should refuse themselves the chance to be fixed and better nobody you shouldn't be afraid of that you shouldn't be afraid of giving yourself the chance to heal because even if you're even if you feel like it, owning up to that if admitting that that you need that means there's something wrong there already is something wrong whether you admit it or not and it's not going to fix unless you confront it and that's really difficult to do on your own once again I'm really sorry that I've missed out on a few entries this last month it's been really really difficult to uh, to find the um, the right motivation and the right energy and the right feeling for this and I hope this one worked here comes the dog she's coming to say good morning hi Tilly how you doing oh she's going right to the front door okay well that's my cue uh, hope you guys are doing all right all right Tilly I'll be there in a sec hope you guys are doing all right I'm gonna go take the dog for a walk you take care of yourselves all right and it's good to see you again I'll see you again next week